So Kingfish has been one of the biggest uh, inspirations to me over the past year or so in my playing, uh, particularly because I've been um, really focusing on the blues for the Blues Hound course that's coming out on guitarfam.com very soon. Uh, and, and to kind of kick things off and get in blues mode here on the site and on the channel, I wanted to do uh, the solos from one of my favorite songs of his called Rock and Roll. Here's the third solo from that, but we'll be going over all three solos in this video. <laughs> So if you haven't uh, listened to the album 662 by Kingfish, I'd really recommend doing it. Uh, this song, Rock and Roll, which we're going to take a look at all three of the solos from this song, is a little bit more modern, kind of poppy, mainstream sounding, but everything else in there is pretty traditional blues. It's a little more aggressive too, that's one of the reasons why I really like it. Uh, but again, this is one of the main inspirations for the blues uh, hound course that's coming out very soon on the site. And if you haven't yet, go to guitarfam.com and create a complimentary account, you'll be able to access the first module of all of our premium courses. All right, let's go ahead and get into this uh, one solo at a time. And if you have any questions or requests for future YouTube videos, just leave them in the comments below. <laughs> Okay, first off, let's take a look at what key you're in and the chord progression we're playing over. Uh, we're in the key of D major. You can also think about it as B minor. That's the relative minor. And uh, the key of D major is spelled D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A major, B minor, C sharp diminished. And the chord progression we're playing over is just a three chord progression. It's B minor. So the six, a four, which is a G, and then a D. Just over and over again. So a whole measure of B minor one. Two, three, four, G, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the whole time that's all we're playing over. I like to think about this as being in the key of D major. Uh, so I think about my pentatonic I'm using is uh, D major because it always res it's always resolving down to D major into my ear. But you can also think about it as B minor. That's perfectly fine. Okay, let's take this uh, just one little look at a time, and I'll think tell you about what uh, scales I'm thinking about uh, over the chords as they go by. So this first one. <laughs> Okay, and there are a lot of articulations in this solo, lots of vibrato, lots of sliding, lots of bending. And that was the toughest part to me, that and the phrasing as far as the rhythm of this uh, solo goes. So I'd really recommend listening, listening, listening to this solo over and over again until you can sing it and relying on that for your rhythms uh, instead of just trying to memorize the rhythms uh, from the tab, all right? So I'll play that again. Okay, so I'm thinking about this, you can think about it as this B minor that goes with this E minor chord shape or this D major pentatonic that goes with this G major pentatonic shape. Either way, standard pentatonic box, right? That's what I'm thinking for this. To start off, I go seven on the D string, then roll over to seven on the G string, roll back over to seven on the D string, then over to nine on the G string, and then it's back to seven on the D string, and then back to nine, on the G string, but this time, as soon as you hit nine, you just slide up to 11 and put some vibrato on it. So that's the first lick. And you'll notice, like, look at my index finger, how it's laying over all these lower strings to keep them from ringing out. Then this finger is laying over pretty flat to keep the high B and E strings from ringing out. And even then, my fingers up here. I'm meeting the high E and B strings and then the lower strings I'm getting with my, my palm and my thumb. So that note's the only note that you hear ringing out there. And you, when you do this, you want only one string ringing out at any given time, so. Okay, next little lick is keep your finger on 11. And I kind of change to the next major pentatonic scale up, this D major pentatonic scale that uses the E shape, right? But 11 of the G string, where we just had our vibrato going, and then 10 of the B string with my middle finger, and I come back to 11, but as soon as I hit it, I slide down to nine, and you'll see it notated as a slide into nine. 
sorry. And that's how I'm doing that. And then I hit it again, nine, once I land there. And pull off to seven, so. Okay, one more time. After that pull off, what you do is you bend nine, a whole step, pre-bend it, hit it, let it down, and then it's seven of the G string, so. And you can do a pull off or uh, just pick both up. Either one you want there, and then go to nine, seven of the D string. I do a pull off there from nine to seven. And then I go back to nine of the G string, do a full step bend. And then seven of the G string. Some vibrato, and then I slide down and out to kind of finish that note. So I'm gonna play that second phrase for you. And I'm doing a different vibratos at different spots in different ways over here, just according to what I feel, whatever feels good. I'm pulling down on that one. You, you can do whatever you like, just experiment with whatever works for you. Okay, next, so we slid down. Then we come back to the 10th fret of the B string, and I'm thinking about still just standard minor pentatonic box here. I bend that 10th fret of the B string up a whole step. Let it back down. Give us some vibrato. From there, after you put that vibrato on 10, you go to an eight on the B string. And this is where I change my thinking really quickly to just a D major uh, skill, pinky starting G shape there. So, and then nine of the G string and slide up to 11. And I'm thinking about the next pentatonic shape up at that D major pentatonic E shape, so. Then I grab 10 of the B string, then go back to 11 and just do a quick slide down to nine. I'm sliding down to nine. You'll see that in the tab there. And then I do a little pull off to seven and then back to nine on G, then roll over to nine on the D string. So you can see I've come back down to this pentatonic there. So if you, as soon as you do the roll, and end up on the seven. Let me play that for you up to that point slowly and then I'll speed it up a little so you can get the feel for the rhythm. Okay, a little bit faster. And I put a vibrato in wherever I can on this because he does that a lot. And he uh, kind of chokes that seventh fret to go into the next phrase. So let me play the whole thing up to you up to this point, for you up to this point, then we'll learn the last little phrase that ends this with. So, here you go. Okay, and we end this uh, last little measure and we're gonna stay on this major pentatonic or B minor pentatonic if you want to think about it like that. I play like a really Jimi Hendrix uh, sounding like I'll play it for you real quick and then we'll pick it apart. Okay, so I'm barring the seventh fret of the D and G strings with my index finger, hitting them, hammer on to nine, then pull back off to seven. All while of the seventh fret of the G string is ringing out. And then I go 10, nine. I'm thinking major scale a little bit here again. Just pull off from uh, 10 to nine on the A string. And then I go nine, oh sorry, seven, nine, seven on that same string with a pull off, it's quick. And then I end resolve on this D over the D chord to end that phrase and slide down to finish. So that whole thing slowly. faster. Okay, here it is again one more time then we'll get into the second solo.
Okay, we get up a little higher for the second solo, and uh, I start off thinking about a D major chord, but it's using the C major shape all the way up here, and I think about the D major scale based off of that. And the first lick out of this little solo, this solo is only half as long as the last one, so is 17 on the A string, and then 14, 16, 17 on the D string, and then 14 on the G string. And that's really the first little uh, area that you need to think about, and it goes. Just straight up the scale, and then from there, your pinky comes up to 17, and slides up to 19, so. And that's on the B string. Okay. And then I come back down here to the 14th fret of the G string. With my index finger, and then pinky on the 17th fret of the B string. Okay. Slide. Back to 14 of the G, 17 of the B. Okay. And then here's an interesting use of uh, triads here over uh, chords. Uh, other than the chords that are being played out, you'll see what I mean. The next little lick is just an A major triad. It really, all I'm doing is playing with my third finger on the 14th fret of the B, G, and D strings and kind of rolling. And I'm playing over a B minor here. So this is a really cool uh, way to uh, kind of um, impose, superimpose triads other than the chord you're playing over and how it sounds really good. So uh, 14, 14, 14 rolling on the B, G, and D strings, and then I slide down to the 12th fret as I'm changing to the G chord in the next measure. So, and that note right there is in a G chord, which is really cool, and that kind of resolves it or gives it some, um, uh, releases some of that tension, and then it goes, it switches to a D major triad over a G chord, which is cool because G, B, D, is the way a G chord is spelled. And if you stack um, a, G, a D chord on top of that, you just get an extension of a G chord, which makes it sound really nice. And all I'm doing is going, and then I play this, you know, if you see this D chord here, I'm just playing these three notes out of it. 10 of the B string, 11 of the G string, 12 of the D string. Okay. So that, that lick is a little bit tricky to get down. But if you see these chords, and it, that will help, so. And then from there, come down to the ninth fret of the G string, bend it up a whole step, let it back down. And then I resolve to the D note on the 12th fret of the D string there. And then slide out for some style, so that whole. From there, I shifted just thinking about kind of a B minor, B minor scale based on this B right here on the ninth fret of the D string, and I go 12, 11, 9 of the D string, and then 12 of the A, and I resolve back to this B on the ninth fret of the D string to finish things off over that B chord, B minor chord. Somebody play that whole solo for you. Really, it's not even four measures long. But it is a different way of thinking about things other than like just pentatonics. Uh, so it's a very good exercise. Here you go. And again, I'm putting in vibrato any chance that I get. Okay, last solo. This is the one where he cranks up the gang to a pretty high level and just really goes for it. Um, let's just start off here. It starts off on this minor pentatonic shape, if you want to think about that B minor or G major pentatonic regular box shape, right? Seventh fret of the G string, and he hits this six times on three E and a four E and a, and it crescendos and builds up into the real first measure of the solo. So this is kind of the pickup to it. 
Okay? And then he hits the 10th fret of the B string. Bent up. And then lets it down and puts some vibrato on it. And then 8th fret of the B string. And this is where I'm kind of thinking uh, D major. Just for a second, just because that note is from outside of the minor pentatonic. So. And then he reaches back to the 6th fret and slides up really quickly to the 7th fret, just for some style. And then 9th fret of the G string. Full step bend, let it down. And then 7th fret of the G string. So that's the first lick. And I'm not doing anything but thinking about, really I'm just thinking about B minor pentatonic here, I guess, because it feels so bluesy. Minus that little eighth fret where I'm starting to think about uh, D major or B minor, whichever one you want to think about. And here something uh, fun happens is you take it into the next lick. He holds his and then he kind of slides it up to uh, around the 10th or 11th fret. And he, he just kind of whoosh, whooshes it up. And then he comes to the next lick on the 12th fret of the high E string. And this is where I, I end up thinking about a D major pentatonic bass on the E shape. So he swooshes it up and then grabs the 12th fret, bends it up a whole step, lets it back down. And when he lets it back down, he hits 10 and hammers onto 12 really quickly. It's almost just like a decoration. And then you put some vibrato on it, and I'm fully thinking about this uh, pentatonic up here. You'll see it in the graphic. After that, the vibrato, 10 of the B string with the index finger, 10, roll 10 over to the high, uh, high E string, back to 10, roll back over to the B string, 12, with your third finger, use all these fingers to push up and keep everything as quiet as you can. Let it back down. 10 again of the high E string. 10 of the B string, roll it over. 12 of the G string, and then 10 of the G string, but hammer on really quickly to the 11th fret of that G string. So really, I am thinking about I'm thinking about this D major chord shape, even though I'm playing over a G chord because those chords are so closely related using those triads. And I'm sliding into the third, from the lower third to the major third, and we know if you have any experience with that, and this is covered in the blues sound, to of course, uh, sliding in from the lower third to the, uh, or the minor third to the major third can be really bluesy sound, or jazzy sounding in this case. And you can uh, hammer on or slide, doesn't matter. Whichever one you want. And put some vibrato on that. So, so far, let me play that whole solo up to this point with those two phrases. Here you go. One E and a two E and a three. Okay, and I, again, I'd highly recommend just going and listening to this to where you can sing it to get the rhythms right because if you can't do that, if you can't hear it in your head or sing it out loud, it's going to be really hard to play stuff like this. And this is the thing that took the longest for me to get these solos down was getting the phrasing down for the rhythm. So just listen to it until you're sick of it and you can sing it out loud. Okay, so from here, I reach back to the ninth fret of the A string play that and then I slide from 12 I hit 12 with my pinky but that's just to get into the 14th fret it's just a decoration to get into 14 because you'll see a 14 with a slash in front of it and then I reach to the 12th fret of the D string with my middle finger actually I think I use my index finger on that one because I have a quite a stretch here coming up so 12 and then 14 with my third finger on the G string with some vibrato and then reach back to 12 on the B string, then 11 on the G string, and then all the way up to 15 with my pinky. And when, as I'm playing this, I'm really thinking about this D major shape. So this D is really my anchor point for this D shape. So if I start that leg, 14, up to 15. 
as soon as I do that, 12, 14 of the high A string, and then 15 of the B string, 14 of the G string. And you can see I'm just outlining this D chord if you really pay close attention. Let's see. Okay, so one more time, I'll do that slow. All right, this next lick is pretty interesting. It's just over a D major chord, so I'm thinking about this E-shaped D major chord. And I go 12th fret. So I go 12th fret of the G string, and then I go 10th fret of the G string, but I immediately hammer on to the 11th fret, which is the lower third, up to the major third, and then after that I go to the 12th fret of the D string, which is my root note of my, um, and really, this is over a G chord. Sorry if I said D earlier. G, a G chord about to go into a D. And then the next few notes get into the D chord. And what I do is I play the 12th fret. I roll my uh, third finger over from the 12th fret of the D to the 12th fret of the A. And I walk down from the 5 to the 5, 5 to the 4 to the 3rd. And by that time, I'm already playing over the D. And then I come back to the 12th fret of the D string with my pinky. So that looks pretty cool. It uses a D chord or D arpeggio kind of thing to cover the G and the D chord. So here we're at the D chord. And then and we transition to the D chord here. So I'm really, I'm thinking. I'm just thinking this D chord here. Okay, now we're getting in to uh, what I call the big nasty lick of the song. And this one takes a lot of time to get under your fingers. So I would recommend just slowing it down, really painting by numbers, programming in the lick for what it is. And the longer you do that, the longer you can use self-control to kind of just go slow through this, the easier this one will be to play. So it starts off on beat four of the previous measure and just does a full step bend. And the whole thing, luckily, is just using this B minor pentatonic. I think about that the whole time. Right? So I'll go 10, whole step bend on four, and then on one in the next measure, 10, same thread, just unbent with some vibrato. And then we get into some 16th note triplet runs. This is all the way to the end of the lick except for the last kind of three notes, which uh, kind of straighten out and go back to either like regular 16th notes, regular eighth notes. So I'll just paint by the numbers. Here it is for you. I'll play it slowly and then we'll break it down. Here you go. So. Uh, it's seven, then ten seven. And you can think of this is triplet, okay? So t seven on the high A string, ten seven on the B string, and then nine on the G string, bent up a whole step, then seven ten on the B string, and then seven, roll that index finger over to seven of the high A string, then roll it back to the B string on seven. Hammer on to 10, then seven of the high E string, 10, pulled off to seven of the B string, nine of the G string, bend up a whole step, seven, 10, back to nine of the G string, just seven of the B string, and then nine, bend up, let it back down, seven on the G string, and then nine, seven, on the D string, roll your index finger over to seven of the G string, roll it back over to seven of the D string, and this is where it straightens out, you get away from those triplets. You just have seven, but sliding down to seven of the A string, then five of the A string, and then the octave, seven on the G string. So this is a really nasty one. Again, I would really recommend just going super slow and just listening to it a lot until you can sing it. Right? Until you can get that in your head. But do it, just go slow. And this is one of those things where you just have to practice it multiple times a day for several days or a week or two weeks or however long it takes. some vibrato on it at the end. But that's a lick that's very worthwhile to learn, I think, because 
it it gets out of like the cliche uh, sequences of uh, pentatonic runs that you hear that are like this, and it's kind of more randomized, which is really cool because it's a little bit unpredictable and a little bit unique sounding. So here's solo three all together again for you. All right, that's it for this video. Um, I'll roll all three solos back to back again here for you so you have a nice consolidated place uh, to watch the tab and listen as the solos go by. I'll, also, if you haven't gone to guitarfam.com yet and created your complimentary account, do that. You'll get access to the first module of all of our premium courses. That includes the new Blue Sound course that's coming out very soon. I'll be putting out a lot more videos on the blues for upcoming uh, YouTube videos here too, so stay tuned for those. See you later.